much is enough or not enough? The difference between surviving and existing or living life. A minimum wage just lets you exist. A living wage lets you live a full life. Now, let me introduce you to a fictional character living the hard reality of a low-income lifestyle in Ontario. My name is Lucy, I am 30 years old, and I live in Peterborough, Ontario. I have two kids, named Michelle, who is 10, and Michael, who is 5. I work part-time at a clothing retail store in the Peterborough Mall for $11 an hour, and also part-time at a chain coffee shop for the same hourly wage, with no benefits received at either job. I work about 30 hours combined at both jobs. My husband is a tow truck driver receiving $14 an hour. I currently receive Ontario's minimum wage of $11, and it is just not enough. I dream of a better life while I'm receiving the living wage of $16.50 an hour. At the current $11 an hour, 16% of Ontario minimum wage workers fall below the poverty line. That is 4.3 million Canadians living in poverty each year. I am just one of the 4.3 million. Think about that number. Wow. I dream of earning a living wage. Now when I say living wage, I don't mean a wage that would allow me to buy a huge house or fancy BMW, although that would be nice. But rather I just mean a wage that would ensure basic essentials like clothing, food, transportation, and shelter are met. The current living wage in Ontario, and Peterborough specifically, is $16.50. That is much higher than the current minimum wage of $11, which is what the government says is the least, the least, that employers have to pay their employees. I don't know how that's supposed to support us. Even with my husband's wages, it is just not enough. I'm barely getting by. We currently rent a three-bedroom apartment. There's nowhere for my kids to play. As we live on the third story, it is not the safest part of town. I dream of earning a living wage so I, we can afford to rent an apartment with a yard. Or better yet, maybe even a small house. But do dreams come true? I was making my kids lunches the other day, and as I opened the fridge door, I noticed that once again, the fridge was pretty empty. After I moved the expired milk, I found a couple yoga tubes for their lunches. Both of their teachers have sent notes home, asking me to pack more in the lunch pails, as by the time the second lunch comes around, the lunch pails are empty and the kids are hungry. I wish it was that easy, but unfortunately, we do not have an unlimited amount of food in our cupboards. <coughs> it breaks my heart when I read the teacher's notes. My motherly duty is to provide for my children. And when I can't, I can't even explain that feeling. I dream that one day, they will have the choice of many fruits and vegetables. That I can afford to pack those cool lunch pail snacks. You know, like the scooby doo snacks that they come home telling me about. I dream that I can earn a living wage. So the cupboards are full and the fridge is well stocked. A minimum wage doesn't allow for my dreams to become a reality. A living wage would, but can dreams come true? My daughter Michelle was sick the other day with a fever and cold and needed to go to the doctor. Our family car was once again broken down. So I had to walk my sick daughter several blocks outside just to take her to the walking clinic. You might be wondering, hey, why didn't you take the bus? But we needed to spend the fare that we spent the bus fare on bread for their lunches. I had a call into the coffee shop sick, and my boss was not impressed. You see, the thing with low-income jobs is that you feel that you're easily replaced, that at any point, if I can't show up to work, that I will be replaced. Thankfully, I think I still have a job to go back to tomorrow. Well, hopefully I do. I dream that someday we'll be able to own a family car that works. It can afford gas and insurance for me. I dream that someday we will not have that financial <coughs> stress of trying to stretch the small amount of dollars that come into the house. I just don't know what else we can give up. I dream that someday I will receive a living wage. A, la a wage that would relieve some stress and allow me to live and not just survive. 
but do dreams come true? When you think of someone working a minimum wage job, what do you think of? High school dropout? Someone lazy? Teen mom? Someone who spends all of their money on cigarettes, right? I bet you'd be surprised to know that I graduated high school. With honors, actually. So why didn't I go to university or college? The easy choice, right? Because my mother couldn't afford to support me. And even with other financial resources, it just wasn't possible. I have always dreamed of going back to school. I have always wanted to be a nurse. I just want to go back to school so that my kids will think I've done something with my life. So they can be proud of me. I dream of earning a living wage so I can go back to school. So that my kids can go to university or college. But most of all, I dream that they break the cycle that I fell into. I dream that my kids break the cycle that I fell into. But could this dream come true? At the end of every month, we're always faced with choices. Not choices like what restaurant to go to on a Saturday dinner. That's not even an option for us. But choices like if I don't pay the phone bill, will they disconnect us? Or can I just pay it next month? Choices like after the rent is paid, will I be able to afford enough food for my family for the month? Or should I stop by the food bank? Choices like my son Michael needs a new winter coat and my daughter Michelle needs new snow boots. And if the used clothing store doesn't have both for a reasonable price, which one will I buy? How does a mother decide if a child can just cram their feet into two small boots for a month? Or if by putting a couple extra layers on the other child would be better? Our reality is that we can never get ahead. Our reality is that we are always scraping by. I dream that someday I will not lose sleep over the little money that remains in our bank account. I dream that someday I can save for retirement, that I can make less choices, that I can afford real OHIP insurance. A living wage would support my dreams, but do dreams come true? We're sitting down for dinner the other day at 8 o'clock at night. After I had finished working an eight hour day at work, and my, son, my husband had just gotten home from work himself, when we asked the kids how the day at school was. You might wonder, who looked after their children while they were at work, and after they had gotten home from school? More on that in a second. But anyways, my son Michael told us how he wanted to play soccer this summer, how his friends from school were playing soccer, and asked if he could play also. How do you tell a child that no? There just isn't enough money for him to do so. I dream of earning a living wage so that Michelle can do swimming lessons and Michael could do soccer. I dream of earning a living wage so when my kids ask these questions, I can think about the answer and not automatically know that the answer is no. Because school supplies need to be bought in September, someone looks at, have, has to look after the kids while we're working in the summer, right? And that Michael's clothes are looking too small on him, oh, once again. See, the things I dream of are not huge. But with the living wage, my dreams could become a reality. Now, back to who looked after my kids while we were working. My daughter did. Yes, she is 10, but she's responsible, right? Now, does it make me a bad mother that I let my kids walk home by themselves? Trust that they can let themselves into their apartment, maybe play for a couple hours by themselves, do their homework by themselves? But if I can't afford new winter boots for Michelle and I can't afford enough food for their lunches, how can I afford a daycare for them? How can I afford babysitter? If I can't afford the basics of life, how am I supposed to afford daycare? That is not an option for me right now. So I trust that my daughter's responsible, right? But let's say if I, had a real, if I earn a real living wage, my daughter and son can both go to babysitters on the day they get home before us. They can both do daycare, they can both do after school programs. Are you starting to see that the minimum wage keeps us in poverty? Did you know that someone working full time for the current minimum wage of $11 an hour would earn less than Statistic Canada's low income cutoff, the most commonly used poverty line in Canada? I dream of not living in poverty. I dream of earning a living wage. I was working at the clothing store the other day and my boss asked me how I was. I answered the standard, good. When really I was faced 
making more hard choices. I knew the question that I wanted to ask, but I was scared. So I silently counted to three and then asked, why don't you pay your employees a living wage? I knew that, so I was expecting for him to walk me to the door, take me by the hand, and wish me good luck at my next job. I was just so frustrated with barely getting by. You know when you reach a point where enough is enough? Yeah, I reached that point. Do you see the importance for a living wage? Do you see why it matters? Do you understand that without a living wage, my dreams will not be achieved? My kids will not get the opportunities they deserve. I'll be faced to make choices that no mother should ever have to face. I dream that my kids are proud of me, that on Christmas morning they can wake up to a tree full of presents, that we'll be busy taking Michael to soccer and Michelle to swimming instead of taking the time to balance the multiple jobs it takes to survive. I'm not living. I'm surviving. I'm not living. I am just existing. And throughout it all, I have to wonder, do dreams come true? You see, Lucy's story reveals the difference between the minimum wage and the living wage. At this point, you might be saying, okay, I get it. I see the difference. But what can be done, and why isn't anything being done? Would you be interested to know that while McDonald's CEO was paid $13.8 million last year, most of his employees are making the minimum wage falling below the poverty line. While your CEO is making $13.8 million, you're making choices that no one should ever have to make. Work should lift you out of poverty, not keep you there. Many employers have a similar response to Lucy's employer. What confused Lucy more than not being walked to the door was her employer's response. He got a confused look on his face and said, it would cost too much. Like most employers, he really didn't know what a living wage is, nor did he know how much it would even cost. You see, living wages vary in every area, depending on the cost of living. But no matter the cost of living, every employer needs to know how much the living wage is, why it matters, and how it benefits both them, the employees, and the customers. Employers would benefit from reduced absentees reduced turnovers, more dedication to the job, and a higher quality of work from their employees. Imagine if Lucy got paid $16.50 an hour at a full-time job. She would be able to spend more time with her family, as she would no longer be juggling multiple jobs. She would have an increased positivity at work, which would then increase the, her boss's sales. The cost of living, obesity, and mental health issues are increasing at a dangerous rate in Canada. The status quo is not working for Canadians. An increase in employers implementing living wages would help decrease these trends. People think that the government is the only one in control of wages. Have you ever thought that employers have just as much power? But why isn't the employers doing anything with this so-called power? Employers are slow to pay living wages because they think it costs too much. I bet they'd be interested to know that a clothing wage worker's salary or wage is only about 1-3% to of an actual clothing item itself. Let's say a $50 shirt. In order for that clothing worker to get paid a living wage, there'd only need to be a $1.50 increase. Lucy's life would change. Her dreams would become a reality. She'd be happier, healthier, excited to work. And enthusiasm is easily noticed by the customers and the consumers. In the employer, sorry. Employers who pay living wages have found that the high enthusiasm actually benefits their sales. And consumers would barely even notice a $1.50 increase on a $50 shirt. Living wages are important. They are a necessity. They break down barriers on the rise out of poverty. Now I ask you this. Would you rather live or exist? Would you rather live or survive? Would you like to see dreams like Lucy's and many other people's dreams come true? If you answered yes to all those questions, I challenge you, what are you going to do about it and how are these, going to dream? How are these dreams going to become a reality? Thank you.